Sorry if you hear the chicken outside my window. One of our chickens literally just came up to the window and is talking to me as loudly as possible. Yes, Dolly, I see you. Two things on my list. Hello everyone and welcome to the Young Folk Knits podcast. My name is Casey and this is a special episode. Welcome to the Young Folk Knits podcast. My name is Casey and I'm the maker here at Young Folk Knits. This is a podcast mainly about knitting. I also do some other crafts, which I sometimes talk about like sewing, crochet, or beadwork, but mainly I talk about knitting. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for joining me today. And if you're new, then you are very welcome. I live on a small farm in Arkansas with my family where we raise honeybees and chickens and a little farm. And we love to spend a lot of time outside. One thing I get a lot of questions about are different knitting tools and notions. Would I recommend them? Do I use them? Is it worth it? So I thought it would be fun if today we did a video with my top 20 knitting tools and notions that I actually use. So I wanna preface this video with saying I think that everybody's list, if they made one of their top 20 knitting tools and notions, would probably be a little bit different. There are some things that I think would be universal on everyone's list. And then there are some things that I think are definitely going to be open to personal preference, what you enjoy using. Maybe there's a certain technique that I would use a certain tool to do and you might use a different tool to do. So if you don't see a tool that you absolutely couldn't live without on your knitting journey, let me know in the comments. Maybe I need to try it out as well. And then that way we can all look at the comments and see if there are some different tools maybe we need to add to our list. When I first started knitting, I had no idea the rabbit hole that I was jumping into. But let's be honest, if you wanna knit, you need two things. First of all, you need some yarn, and second of all, you need some knitting needles. All of the rest are things that are very useful and you might need later on down the road. But if you're a beginner knitter, just start out with the basics. Get some yarn and get some needles. Another reason I thought this video might be useful is because honestly, unless you are a knitter, you probably have no idea what most of these tools would even be used for. So I thought this might be a handy video to send the link to friends and family that might want to get the knitter in their life a gift and are not sure what to buy. If you want to surprise them, maybe this list will give you a few ideas. I'm literally just going to go through the 20 different things that I use the most and the things that I think are worth my money. If something happened to one of these, I would repurchase it. Okay, so let's jump in. are things that are not required to knit, but I find them so extremely helpful in saving me time and wrist pain. And those things are drum roll, a swift, and a ball winder. 
And this one is an umbrella swift. There are actually different kinds that you can use. This is from Knit Picks and it was more reasonably priced than others that I have seen. So in case you've never seen one of these before, this is actually used to wind yarn from a hank or a skein into a ball so that you can knit with it. Some yarn you can buy from the store that's already in a cake or a ball, but a lot of times 100 gram skeins of yarn need to be wound before you can knit with them. So this is most commonly used in conjunction with my number two item, which is a ball winder. I will say, however, that you can use a yarn swift by itself without a ball winder. If you want to buy both of these things, but you don't want to make the purchase at the same time, I would recommend getting the swift first and then you can purchase the ball winder later. And the reason for that is you cannot use a ball winder without a swift, <laughs> but you can use a swift without a ball winder because you can place your yarn on this and you can still wind your yarn by hand. But when these two work together, it's magic. The reason I love that is that it significantly cuts down my time in preparing to knit and gives me more time to actually knit. Okay, the next three things on my list are little gadgets. So three, four, and five I will show you. First of all is a neck light. <laughs> so you can put this on around your neck and turn it on and then you can knit without having to hold a lot. So if you're knitting on dark colors like black, if you're trying to pick up stitches, you know, after you turn the heel of your sock, then this can be very handy if you're knitting at night, if you're in a room with your partner and they want to go to sleep and have the light turned off but you still need to see. <laughs> the neck lamp I think is great. This is one I purchased off of Amazon and it works really well. It has a light setting for both warm light cool light and more of a neutral color so I really enjoy it. I don't use it every time I knit but when I need it I need it and I'm glad that I've got it. Number four on my list is a row counter. So this is a row counter that I got from Coco Knits but there are row counters everywhere. Walmart you can probably find one. You can definitely find them on Amazon and this one was around $15, but that's pretty expensive for a row counter. I really like it because it feels substantial. When I click it, it works every time. I love that it has a lock. I can place it in my project bag and it's not accidentally gonna hit this and take me to the next row without me knowing it. It locks it and it can't be pressed down. So I do really like this. There's many options though. You can search for a row counter on the internet and find a lot of really nicely priced ones. Now, another tool I find really invaluable is a scale. It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be fancy. I think I ordered this from either Amazon or Walmart. It's a tailor scale, but it seems to be very accurate. And the main thing is that I can measure in grams. If I use a partial skein and want to save that skein to use later for other projects, it's important to be able to weigh it and know how much yardage I actually have. Will I have enough to complete a project? So I use a scale with almost every project. Next thing on my list is actually a journal. I have quite a few journals. I just grabbed a few of them. This is my project journal, and that is where I actually write down all the details of a certain project so that I can later go back and look at it and remember all of the important information. This is something that I usually do at the end of the project or as I finish different things in the project. Now, Victoria from Victoria's Wool, she put me on to why I needed a second journal. <laughs> As you can see, this one is much smaller. This one is like a three by five inch, and this is what I'll actually keep in my project bag with me. That is where I write down all of the details about where I'm at in a pattern for each project that I'm working on, and I write it down as I go. That way I can easily pick up a project and know exactly where I'm at. Or I can pick up a project that has been languishing in my whip pile for a year and not have to rip back and start over because I know where I'm at in the pattern. Okay, the next few things on my list I feel truly are a necessity when you're a knitter. First of all is a measuring tape. 
If you're going to follow a pattern, you pretty much have to have some way to measure what you're doing. Not only do you have to measure the piece that you're actually knitting on, but you have to be able to measure yourself. If you're knitting a garment, you have to be able to measure your bust size. If you're knitting a hat, it's really helpful to know the circumference of your head. If you're knitting a sock, you probably need to know the circumference of your own ankle <laughs> and foot. So this is not really something you can fudge on not having. <laughs> Next up, scissors. While you're working with yarn, if it's wool, you can usually just break it with your hands. But after you finish your project and you sew your ends in, you're definitely going to need some scissors to snip your yarn ends. These are some gold heron scissors. So when you open them, they look like the bird. I, I really love using them. And they have a protective case to keep from stabbing yourself. <laughs> or putting a hole in your project. Okay, another thing that you absolutely will have to have when you knit is some tapestry needles. This little case was gifted to me by a hobby, which I keep my tapestry needles in. My favorite though are the bent tip ones. The next thing you will use at some point while knitting is a needle sizer. So when we buy needles, we know what size they are and they probably have it marked on the middle as well. After you use a knitting needle for a while, the size marking will rub off and then you will have no idea what size you're looking at. <laughs> Hence the needle sizer. All you have to do is stick it in the different holes and whichever one fits, that's the size it is. <laughs> Next on my list is a crochet hook. I'm knitting, not crocheting. That may be, but I always keep a crochet hook in my knitting bag. And the reason for that is that I use one on almost every project. If I do a provisional cast on, I have to have a crochet hook to crochet my cast on edge first. If I drop stitches, I can usually fix it with my knitting needle, but if I drop it a long way down, crochet hook is the easiest and neatest way to fix it because you don't have to pull your knitting needle down and stretch your stitches out. You can simply put your crochet hook in and work those stitches back up. There are other uses for crochet hook and knitting, but bottom line, I use it a lot. And then when you finish your knitting project, you can crochet a super cute blanket. Next up, are point protectors. I find point protectors really valuable because a lot of times if you have a project that is bigger than your needles, when I say bigger, I mean that if you were to lay your project out flat, it's actually longer than your needles are long, it can fall off your needles. If you put point protectors on, it keeps your project in place, helps keep you from dropping stitches, and it helps keep your knitting needle ends from poking through your bag or poking through your fabric and just protects everything in general. Another great use for point protectors is whenever you are picking up stitches. Maybe you're using a circular needle that is smaller than the area you are picking stitches up on so it's really scrunched together and maybe the stitches start falling off the end for instance if you're using nine inch circulars or 16 inch circulars if you put a point protector on one end of your needle and pick up stitches with the other end it's a stopper and your stitches won't fall off okay i have two more knitting tools that i think are really helpful in the knitting process one you probably can't knit without the other you'll never want to knit without. First up, absolutely must have are stitch markers. <laughs> these are my favorite. These are the most versatile, most used. And honestly, if you get these, you don't have to have anything else. These are the light bulb stitch markers. You can buy a box of these with a hundred for a really great price. So these are what I like to call the light bulb stitch markers. They open. They're very light and they're basically a safety pin shaped like a light bulb. Most knitting patterns that you do will call for a stitch marker. If you're knitting in the round, you'll have to have a stitch marker to mark your beginning of round. If you're doing certain repeats, it can be really helpful to mark your separate repeats. I even like to use them when I cast on. If I'm casting on a large number of stitches, I will put a stitch marker every 50 stitches. That way I don't have to go back and recount 
past that stitch marker. These are also invaluable for doing increases or decreases. If you're working a sleeve and you have to do a decrease every inch and a half, and let's say you have 20 decreases to work, you can put one of these into your stitch on every decrease that you work, and that way you can go back and easily see where your last decrease was, how many you've done, and you can just count your markers. Then you can move them to your next sleeve one at a time, and you'll know when you're done. Part two of the same tool, I will add in there progress keepers. Now that's not the same thing as a stitch marker. So let's say you wanna track how much knitting you're doing each day. A progress keeper is something that you can hook into a stitch when you start that day. And when you're at the end of the day, you can see how much fabric you've created in that specified amount of time. Here's a really pretty progress keeper that I have got from Elijah from Horse and Feather Fiber Arts. She is one of my favorite progress keeper makers. Hello Lavender has some beautiful ones. It just adds a little bit of joy into your knitting when you're looking at your project. So stitch markers are a necessity. My next pick is something that you do not have to have, but I absolutely recommend it. And once you use it, you can never go back. And that is, um, mm, what are they called? Stitch, hold, stitch holders, stitch holders, stitch holders. That was rather anticlimactic. So if you're knitting a garment and you have to put your sleeve stitches on hold or you need to put the back on hold while you work the front, what do you do with those stitches when you keep them live? Well, obviously you can use a needle and thread some waste yarn through. That works absolutely great. Nothing wrong with doing that. That's an excellent way to do it. But it is tedious sometimes if you have a large number of stitches to thread those stitches through and then to try to take them back off again. So you may have heard of the Knitting Barber. I think those are the most popular ones. I don't actually own any stitch holders from the Knitting Barber. I did order some from Simply Sarah Knits, but if you're like me, you never have just one project. So one set of stitch holders is not enough. So what I did was order this spool from Amazon and it was like $10, $11, and I have enough to make myself probably 10 or more sets of the stitch holders. When I say sets, most of the time they come with one long one and you can use it to try your garment on, to hold your front or your back or your body stitches. Maybe you wanna switch out needles. Maybe you just need to place it on hold. Great for trying it on. Then it comes with two shorter ones, which are used for your sleeves. You normally put those on hold while you're working the body and then you'll work your sleeves. So what makes these so great is that they are hollow tubes and you can stick your knitting needle into the end of this hollow tube and then you can simply pull the knitting needle out and your stitches will just seamlessly slide onto the stitch holder. It's amazing. So then when you're done with doing whatever you're doing and you're ready to start knitting again, you can just pop this onto the end of your knitting needle and slide your stitches right back on. It's very fast, it's very easy, and I'm lazy, so I love it. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna show you that has to do with actually knitting your project is a project bag. Do you have to have a project bag? No. Do you need one? Probably. Can it be a Ziploc bag? Yes, it can. However, I like to have a pretty project bag and I have ordered project bags from many different places. However, you can totally make your own project bag. I've probably made about 10 project bags that I have sewn and I'll just show you a few of them. Here is a waxed canvas bag that I've made. I love, I use it a lot. It has pockets and I got the pattern from Anna, who on Instagram is noodlehead531, maybe? I'll link it in the description box below. A few others that I have made are quilted bags. Here's a quilted sock project bag. This is another large project bag that I made, the quilt square. One of my more recent project bags. Lots of different kinds, zippers, drawstrings, lots of options. And who doesn't want a pretty bag to carry their yarn around? Once I finish knitting a project, I always block it. There has rarely ever been a project that I have not 
washed and blocked when I was finished knitting it. So I'm going to show you my most used and useful tools in that process. First up is wool wash. Now when you block your knits, you do not have to use wool wash. Water works just fine. Sometimes I only use water, but you will need wool wash to wash your knits in at some point. And if you want your knits to smell well, if you want to make sure that all of the dye is off of the yarn, or if you want to condition your knits a little bit, some wool wash is nice. A few of my favorites are tufted woolens, which you can buy in a bar form, or you can find liquid wool washes like this Eugelin. Tufted woolen bars, you can actually stick in your knitting bag dry, and they have the most wonderful smell and your knitting will smell absolutely wonderful the whole time you're working on it. And then if you wash it in this as well, it just solidifies the scent. This is chai spice and probably my favorite. So after you wash and soak your knits, it's time to lay them out to dry. For a long time, I used a trash bag on a rug works great or on a bed as i started making more lacy patterns like intricate lace shawls i realized how important it is to be able to pin your shawl and it stay there so you can use a towel maybe lay down a few layers of towels and then put a garbage bag on top your project won't dry very well if it's just setting on a wet towel <laughs> so the garbage bag helps to keep water from soaking in and staying in in the project and underneath it. And then you can kind of pin through the garbage bag into the towels. A few years later though, I did invest in some blocking mats and it was a wonderful investment and I've been very pleased. I got these Knit IQ blocking mats, which I ordered off of Amazon and they have been wonderful. It comes in a bag and it comes with a package of T-pins. So it really comes with everything you need to block. Thing I love about these though is you can put as many or as few as you want together to make it the size or shape that you would like any shape that works well for your project i really love though the one inch squares this makes it so easy to block a project to the measurements the pattern calls for you can easily line it up with your squares and see your measurement right there in front of you my absolute favorite pins for blocking are these Knitter's Pride blockers. They come in a box with a few different sizes, mostly this size, and it looks like a little hair comb. So this will really help you pin your project in a straight line. It also comes with this half size. I feel like these are invaluable for blocking a neat edge or straight line and I use these every single time. It also makes the pinning process a little bit faster because instead of pinning one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight individual pins, you stick it in there and there's eight at once. Now if I've knit and blocked a sweater that is two sides, it takes a lot longer to dry. And that is when I find this comes in so handy. And this is a mesh. This is a mesh laundry dryer. You can lay it flat on top of something or you can buckle these snaps here and you have a dome which you can lay your sweater on top of and you'll have air circulating both on top and underneath it this will speed your drying process up by a full day at least then when you're ready to store it you just fold it up like those car visors <laughs> that you use in the summer you know those reflectors and it folds up into a really nice small flat circle something okay the last thing I actually think is really really helpful when blocking is a fan I will put this blowing directly on top whenever I have my knits pinned onto a blocking mat sometimes with a sweater I will pin it in place and dry it for a day that way then I will come in and a lot of times it's still wet and I will place the sweater onto the domed mesh dryer that I just showed you plug in this fan and have the fan circulating so that it hits the dome sort of right in the middle and air is blowing both on top and underneath 
the sweater and it will literally dry within a few hours that way <laughs> so it makes all the difference and if you're hot like me and trying to knit in the south then you probably need a fan to be blowing on you while you knit your woolly wools and that's all folks so were there more things i could have included yeah definitely for instance a sock blocker i have sock blockers i love sock blockers but are they necessary I don't think so. Mainly this is all about taking pretty pictures. <laughs> but I do know that there are quite a few more knitting tools and notions. And I would love to hear what you would include on your list. If I didn't include it on mine, let me know in the comments what you think should have been added. Thank you so much for watching. And if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Both of those things really help my channel out and help me to continue producing videos. Thanks again for joining me today and happy knitting. <laughs>